Same time, same time. Good group. Yeah. Okay, today we're out doing another little testing with this 243. <laughs> now it's part of the ongoing testing and development with our new piece for our for our um, bipod system up the front there. Um, for a quick recap, that's Atlas legs that have been fitted to this piece that I've made, which is a top and bottom shell um, that, that clamps on here to on the front of a rail to give uh, basically a good rotation system there. Nice action, high legs, high centre of gravity, nice fold away, all those bits and pieces. When we did a video originally of that, I noticed that something I knew about this rifle, the way it was set up, it was set up with quite a decent effective little little muzzle brake. Um, this is just a, a little hinterland shooting supply muzzle brake which works quite well, quite nice in the way of a hunting brake. The negative of this style of brake for a well set up rifle is that essentially there's, because it's uneven, it actually has an open top, closed bottom, which works nicely for stopping dust, the same as our brakes, it doesn't push as much down to the ground. The little negative it has, and if you look at the video I'll show you here, you can see that the muzzle immediately pushes down. <laughs> it actually pushes down, then comes back and then bounces forward. It's only a little action and to the naked eye it's not really obvious, but you slow it down as I've done here and you can actually see that, that down and back. So what I'd done at that stage was decided, okay, I've been thinking about doing it, I should get around and do it. I pulled my barrel rifle apart and I threaded the muzzle brake to fit so I put a thread on the front here to fit one of my muzzle brakes. This is, these are the muzzle brakes that I'm building. Cerakoted, nice and flat, and nice and even. Um, then I took it out and shot it again. You notice that the actual basic action of it was really nice, straight back, but then there's a definite, it comes back and it lifts up at the end of the cycle. At the end of the power stroke, for want of a better word, it lifts up a little bit and then comes forward. Now because it's coming straight back to start off with, um, it really isn't going to have a lot of inaccuracy out of that. And in all fairness, even with the, with the other system where it was pushing down, this was still an extremely accurate rifle. A little bit more about how you shaped up to it and how you pushed on and that sort of stuff, so it's a little bit more where you could do the wrong thing because it is having that sudden movement right at the beginning of the actual when the bullet's leaving, but still was very accurate. With it coming straight back, it's going to be more accurate. And my decision was to actually have a look. Why was that coming up? So having a look at everything, everything's nice and straight, what's going on, there's only one feature I could see that could potentially cause that. And that came down to essentially <laughs> the nature of this rear stock and the fact that the way it was built here meant that if you pushed hard on the top of this you could actually constantine this a little bit forward. And that would mean that as the rifle came right back there's a chance of it actually lifting up and actually as it pushes against my shoulder because it could actually collapse this piece here. So what I did, just as a test, and that's what the video and that's what we're proving today, was that just by making that straight push line actually a solid thing. I just simply machined off a piece of aluminium to go inside here. Um, it's just bolted to the back and just butts out in the front there. So that would limit the, adjust the adjustment of this. You'd have to change this piece to do that. But it made it rigid, and you can see that action today, how dead straight forward and backwards this thing actually shot. So anyway, um, that's probably going a step too far for what we really need to. You'll just my, my real um, point I wanted to show to people was essentially the difference between an even nuzzle brake where you've got even blast top and bottom, um, and the way of how straight back the action is, and the, the, with a with a otherwise well set up rifle, how an uneven muzzle brake can actually cause the opposite of what's happening. Now people can get tangled up. One of the things that goes is that a rifle that's jumping up in the air, then this sort of thing works really well. It's really helping. And in a hunting setup rifle where you have the classic stock, it it's, hasn't got a straight centre line, then this is a nice balance to go with that. There is a little negative of the fact that you are fighting, you know, stealing from Peter to pay Paul essentially. You're making the front of the muzzle push itself down to stop the back of the rifle lifting the muzzle up. So you're getting a bit more flex and a bit more harmonics going inside there. But as a basic setup and a basic rifle, it's still a nice way to go. It works really nicely. But once you get further, more refined, getting everything nicer, then the less you've got pushing stuff around, the less force, which means the better set up your stock height is, where your butt pad pushes is, the more rigid your chassis is, down to how straight um, your muzzle brake is, how straight it pushes back, is very relevant for you. The other thing you saw today, this is extremely dry and dusty 
conditions. So the, the, there's dust and flaky. You can actually see where I'm shooting. You see the pattern out around here, a good sort of half a meter away from the muzzle is where the actual blast was going. And that's the real design of, and the benefit of my muzzle brake, um, which is, this is one of, which is to actually give it that, that evenness, oh sorry, that, that keep that the high impact of that blast off the ground to make it a lot nicer to shoot. Uh, and there's other features of how nice they are now they're not putting any shock in your face and that side of things um, for this one i could have gone with the two port which is all it needs for this rifle i went with the three port simply out of its you know, i've got them sitting in the cupboard it's easy for me to pick whichever one i, whichever one I want um, but i just wanted to show you that the features of how a muzzle brake is actually working where i've got footage of the same rifle with three different conditions one with the muzzle brake on Sorry, one with a with an uneven port muzzle brake on, so where this rifle started, to an even port, and then even with that, found a little tiny bit I could mess with in the chassis. Anyway, thanks for checking us out, guys. Um, I hope that's of some, inf some information for you, and we'll, um, we'll catch you next time.